What's up, StarCraft fans? Today we're doing the tier list for Hell Train on the Oblivion Express. So, Brian, let us hear the mutation. Oblivion Express is the map where we have to destroy trains. They come in from the west, mainly along two tracks and we have to destroy nine of them to win the game. If we miss more than one train on brutal difficulty, we lose the game. All, right. All enemies, including the train have double life and leave fire on the ground which damages ground units and structures. Alright, that's it, that's basically it, yeah. Um, 2 2 and Sticks Bender are on the call with me today? How are you guys? Great. Hello. I feel I like uh, I feel like this one's really easy, yeah? It says brutal plus three, but I don't it's know. Not, it's not that it's, easy. It's like the easy people have a really easy time. The tough people have a pretty tough time. Okay, yeah. I guess I haven't really used the tough people. Oh well. Yeah, it's kind of a problem of um, so Oblivion Express has pretty sizable waves uh especially with the first double train is quite scary so when you do mutations on oblivion express that directly buff uh the enemies that can be a quite significant problem for commanders who are um not high on damage know, output raw strength in head-on engagements um just like it's just the raw killing power, basically, that some commanders don't have a lot of. And the other thing to note is that that raw killing power comes up again because the train revives, sort of. And by that, I mean it revives. It just has variable probability of just instantly re-dying because Blizzard code is very spaghetti code. So you may or may not have to kill, kill any given train twice because of just die. How about you, Tutu? Yeah, it's kind of luck. I, I I don't I don't think anyone really knows when the when the trains respawn or not. There are theories, but no one has really like it, it's it hasn't been proven. We should get like, to Warcraft on this. Yeah. And also like even if you can do it, it's like it's unreliable. So you can't really rely on the trains not reviving. I don't know. I've I've been able to I've I've been able to actually consistently pull it off. Like in some in some runs, I think I I've, I was able to kill like seven or eight or nine or seven or eight of the nine trains without them reviving. It's uh just uh spam a lot of damage on multiple cars is what I've seen works. Or maybe just a commander. Maybe Arturus really just is good against trains. Anyway, let's begin. Abathur, where do we have him? Abathur. Just die makes him even worse early game. So it's like you you just use toxicness and you don't get anything for them. And then I had burn. to go mass air. So it's just three Leviathans and all like mutalists and maybe a few devourers. And that was like really difficult. And it was against a comp that had bad anti-air so <laughs> against like other comps i think he would have a really tough time so i put him in c maybe even d how about you stick spender I ironically i feel like this is basically not too much harder than a normal game as avatar for people who cannot consistently brutal a by two minutes uh because this is what the easiest way to play avatar is in my experience is just air avatar but anyways uh, the early game on Oblivion Express actually is quite easy. Like the map has an easy early game. So um, as a result, I'm a little surprised to see Abathur that low because you don't have to worry too much about like going out and proactively getting biomass. It kind of sucks that you can't do it, but you really don't have to on, on Oblivion Express. Yeah, Abathur is very much, uh, he's oriented towards durability, not DPS. So Just Die becomes an issue is the simple way of putting it especially if a train if the wrong train revives you might just find oh well well uh, that train is just gonna kind of leave while i'm shooting at it it really doesn't care uh okay bye <laughs> where do you have him so he feels a tiny bit low but i'd be okay seeing him there so see yeah i i kind of am leaning towards l or, or abathur b but we can leave him in c for now I was also kind of thinking B because Swarm hosts with, you know, 
the second prestige. I feel but... like swarm host would have a really, really bad time because their DPS would just be too low and the train would just leave and not care. Oh well. So let's have him in C. Alarak, where do we have him? Uh, Alarak actually does know how to deal damage. Crazy that thought. Um, it's basically just... I mean, just die isn't that big a problem for Alarak because no, Alarak's biggest problem is typically the fact that he overkills his enemies, which, to be fair... Yes, just die means you have to overkill them twice because any damage you deal to them in their first life does not carry over to the second life. But if you're just using mass ascendant, wait, it, ascendant? it really doesn't matter. I'd go wrath. I'd, I would go wrath walkers or you even destroyers here. As well, you can go wrath walkers as well. Uh, destroyers are not going to be particularly good here, but also not particularly bad here. So, eh. Destroyers just aren't that great because against some comps they just die against vanilla. No brutal plus required, like no mutations required. But they ignore but, the fire. You know what else ignores <laughs> the fire? The fact that Ascendants and Wrathwalkers alike both have greater than 10 range. Yeah. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> All right. So what do you have him? Uh, he is probably A tier. And he's A tier because there are S tiers who are just like. <laughs> Arcturus <up> exists. <laughs> Uh, no, Arcturus needs needs like S double S tier, or else nobody else can be an S tier. Period. Yeah. It's not fair. How about you, Tutu? He's really strong. So, and he's really easy. <laughs> to he's not that tough to use. The hardest part is just dodging fire, but you don't. That's not even that hard. So just throw the enemies away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Distract. And away. if Alarak stands on fire, you just like, oh, it hurts a little, but I'll just get move him off. He's not dying. Yeah. Uh. When if you use empower me, then you just destruction wave twice, and then they die twice. They fake die, then um, they real die. I think A is great. A All is right, fine. unanimous. I also had him in A without prestige. Uh, still A. Yeah. Uh, yeah, without prestige, still A. Um, but also, I'd like to make a quick point because people seem to have a hard time getting this properly. So, scorched earth is AOE. That means it's better to have Alarak himself standing in your fire than the supplicant standing in the fire because it means only one target is being hit which means it does not help you to leave Alarak in a cage I see so many people saying why didn't you leave Alarak in a cage against AoE mutators because it's actually even worse Artanis what do we have not help you <laughs> Artanis uh, again, not great on DPS. Also, he has this problem of, for the most part, he has to fight things like head on and actually trade blows with Amon rather than, I shoot at you from back here, you die, I don't get hit. Artanis isn't very good at that. Uh, he has Tempests, but. Disintegrate! Uh, even, even against a lot of comps, the Tempests still have to trade blows. <laughs> and. Unlike carriers, tempests, the actual tempest has to take damage, not the free unit in front of the tempest. Yes. Like tempests are great and all. It's gonna be a little rough at the early game getting the DPS with tempests because just die, tempest DPS against just die with all the overkill might become a problem when actually trying to kill the trains. Similar with Abathur, who could go swarm host because if your ally provides any DPS whatsoever, you should be fine. Same with Artanis on Tempests, but we're comparing him to Abathur for a reason. He's not that great. Uh, you're probably going to want to instead use Dragoons as your train DPS. And at that point, so many comps are going to utterly murder you. Because <laughs> just die is painful. And uh, the double trains are going to be extremely painful. Uh, you're going to want to have very specific top bar usage. You're going to want to be P3. It's just a mess. I would say he's probably getting towards C or D tier. Okay, how about you, Tutu? He is bad. <laughs> As of this recording, I have not... He's the last one. I haven't been with him yet. Everyone else, I have. But it's kind of like I'm just praying for good luck that a train mm -hmm. doesn't respawn. Because mm -hmm. if, if, if a certain train respawns in the middle, I know that the it's over. So it's yeah. like the double trains, the first double trains, if, if both of them respawn, it's just over. At most, one can respawn. And uh, yeah, it's really difficult. Okay. Um, so I would say D, C or D is, yeah. Hmm. Well, if you say C or D, um, I actually had him in D because mm -hmm. sounds All right, really I can't actually remember now if I went Dragoons or Tempest, so I'll have you to check. You went Tempest. 
I went Tempest. Yeah, I went yeah. Tempest. There you go. Yeah, because it occurred to me. I think I did go Tempest in the end, anyways, just because I was tired of like fire. Um, <laughs> well, no, no, actually, at first I tried it with uh, like a lot of people recommending Immortals and Reavers as good DPS and whatnot, and I was like, let's see how well Reavers do against Terran Bio. As it turns out, this map sends a lot of tanks, so Reavers just get utterly hard countered by Terran Bio. It's an, oh, well. it's insane how absolutely awful reavers were this was one of the biggest demonstrations of how utterly worthless the reaver was as a unit how about we <laughs> use how about we say d for dragoon yeah you could use tempest as well i think tempest will probably do as well as dragoons no i mean better. but yeah d tier for dragoon tier yeah d tier for dragoon tier d for disintegrate disintegrate or there disintegrate. we go what there we the go tier? all right the haka where do we have him the Haka is um, considerably better. He's much better. Like he has the impalers, and you just you you probably have to spread them out like even on um, like further the along ground. the track than you might usually do. But you just spread. You just have like several impalers, and then mutilists in the front, and then your pack leaders will deal lots of damage plus tank against the double life enemies. Overall, pretty strong and not and not too tough. So I put him in A. How about you, Sticksbender? Dahaka A seems pretty reasonable. He's the opposite of Artanis. Where Artanis <laughs> has the problem of he's not great at like just smashing into this very strong enemy head on. Uh, Dahaka is a lot better at that. All right, there we uh, go. It, it's kind of ironic how Artanis is the one who has voice lads talking about meeting enemies head on. Ironically, he's the worst at meeting enemies head on. Well, he's just uh, you know. <laughs> oh well, the Haka. He's like, go get him, ally. Go solve my problem. <laughs> yeah, the Haka <laughs> can do it. Arcturus, where do we have him? ESLs can start whacking the trains early. You can also gas the and gas the fat guys while they're still while they're waiting. The fat for the guys, the big guys, <laughs> the big battle cruisers and stuff. You gas them, and then you you start <laughs> hitting the train without anyone else bothering you. I so, should, yeah. I should use fat guys more often. But yes, that is correct. You just gas the fat guys. The ultralists, mm -hmm. the battle cruisers, the Thors, you just gas them and then they don't follow you and you just hit the train for free, but you have been you have already been hitting the train for free for a while. Yes. So, how like, about you six bender? He's so much S that if he's only S, nobody else can be S. He has to be this is like Manx Gone Oblivion Express is like the time to bring out double S because it's just so broken. Is it actually this time is, to bring up double broken. S? It's if you. we want anyone else in S, yes. We could leave him in S for now until we see if anyone else would be worthy of S without Manx's influence, and then we can get rid of Manx so someone else can be S. I'm just concerned it's that we're bringing out S on the on the brutal plus three. That's not even that difficult. It's uh, difficult enough for half the commanders. Well, a third of the commanders, more like. <laughs> All right, fine. Well, let's leave him there for now. Uh, Phoenix, where do we have him? Uh, Phoenix. Yeah, he's pretty. He's pretty good because Kaldal is swinging his arms. Doesn't care too much about hit points. <laughs> Kaldal is dying. Doesn't care too much about dying. Kaldal, he doesn't really care too much about much of anything. He just he just keeps meat grindering. He does have one problem, and that is unfortunately, when the enemies revive from just die, they have a brief period of invulnerability. This period is equal to like four swings from Caldalus with Avenging Protocol giving him attack speed. Uh, and so then he runs into the problem where like if he kills a bunch of like Meliots, like Zealots or Zerglings, then he's physically surrounded in vulnerable enemies and he can't keep swinging for an entire like two basic attacks. And it's so, so sad. However, then he can attack them again and they just kind of Die disappear. Again. They go down the I flames, mean, literally. The fact that the fact that Caldalus can literally solo this mission when there's no mutators like, none of the rest of the commander could required just Kaldalas. Already tells you just how much ample strength Kaldalas has. Just make units to go if you're Kaldalas. And by units, I mean other champions, because obviously you don't use your shells on P2. Uh, and actually use the Phoenix suits. I know, crazy idea. Actually deploying a Phoenix suit at some point during the game. Okay. Uh, and you should be fine. <laughs> like, just use all six champions of the Phoenix suits, and it should just kind of melt. Letter. With ease. Uh, alternatively, if you don't like using P2, you probably could just give Ass Carrier. It'll also probably work. <laughs> okay. Letter. Oh, uh, A. It's How about not you? Not quite S, but A. I was, 
I would put him in S, but yeah. just like the heavy air comps kind of give him a little bit of trouble. So mm. yeah, I, I put him in A because it's without a prestige. Without prestige, still A. Oh yeah. Okay. Ironically enough, without prestige, he loses the weakness to heavy air comps because then he's just massing carriers so he doesn't care anymore. But he is marginally weaker against ground comps at some point. If you would argue that he loses an entire tier because he's worse against air than against ground, then at this point, this would be a situation when I'd say, then just use mass carrier because that would be almost as strong against ground and it would not care if it's air or ground. So if you think it's that big a deal, his weakness against air, then right. you would literally have to agree that mass carrier is even better than P2 here. So I would say he's probably S tier. Well, it's not unanimous. <laughs> no, he put him A and I oh, wait. agree. If you put him in S, I agree too. I, I said he's A or S. So, uh, so can, we I put him in S? S? Yeah, I, I think S is fine. I just yeah. think that um, if you picked P2 and then you get air, then that's unlucky. A little but, annoying, yeah. All right, it's normally, still manageable. Normally because... against air, it's not that bad. So Four both of the you champions just can shoot up. Plus, you have the phoenix suit. You should be fine. So both of you say S. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. Is he anywhere near Arcturus though? No, not no, even close. No. Not even vague. Yeah. He has to actually like fight people. He actually, he actually fight has people. to like play the game instead of playing like point and click. Adventure. Arcturus doesn't fight. He kills. <laughs> Arcturus is literally a point and click adventure. It's not. It's not a challenge. Click the train. To it's make a butchery. It and everything around it die. <laughs> it's a massacre. You win. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, if Phoenix is an S tier, I think we might actually have to break out the double S for this one, or move everyone down a tier. But that doesn't no, seem fair to. That doesn't seem. Yeah. Fair. Uh, if we if we really wanted to keep other people out of S for Arcturus' sake, we would just put Phoenix into A. He would be okay there. He's not like he's S, but he's like S minus A plus level. Yeah, of S, doesn't you know? doesn't Phoenix seem closer to Alarak and Dhaka than he is to Arcturus? Yes, but literally Arcturus is in a different tier list, so it's not fair to compare him <laughs> to Arcturus. If you we want to compare people portrait. to our if we wanted to compare people to Arcturus, it would be Arcturus in S tier, and then the next highest is D tier, and then everyone <laughs> is in F tier for the most part. Like, it's just not actually a comparison. Okay, Maybe so a cheat code for this week. Okay, so we'll leave Phoenix and we'll leave Phoenix in S, and we'll leave Alarak and Dark in A. But we'll probably have to put Arcturus in. Yeah, we'll have to break up the first double S. I still Honestly, don't know what you, color to you use. You don't for. even have to call it double S in this case. In this case, you can call it cheat code. Oh yes, that's what I think. That's what double S is meant to be. Like the guys in the guys with S are the S the S tier of, among the S tiers. They, like they they yep. they are so regular good. A, regular S regular S is the ones who are S tier, despite the fact that they still actually play the game. <laughs> <laughs> they're still playing fair, but they're S tier. Whereas Mengst is just cheating here. Yeah. Okay, Han and Horner, where do we have them? I would say it's P2, Battlecruiser, plus Hellions. And uh, they're okay. They're not... It's it's not great. It's not terrible. So I don't think enemy comp matters too much. Strike Fighters, you weaken them. If they're weaker enemies, you take out one life with Strike Fighters and then finish them off with Magmines or two Strike Fighters. Uh, it's like B, C. Okay. How about uh, Sticksbender? You're, you're considering them for up in B? Probably not. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, they aren't that great. Like, as soon as something could actually shoot back against their army, they have a bad day. I like, guess mm. just die, especially. Their whole the whole reason their army has any survivability at all is because sometimes it can actually kill Amon before Amon can kill you. This is not always the case, and with just die, this is much less often the case. So that's not great news for Han and Horner. C tier seems appropriate because you're just going to suffer a lot from the fact that your army is... Yeah, you're going to trade a lot. You're going to trade a lot, and Han and Horner do a bad job trading already, and when the enemies are twice as tanky, the trading is going to go badly. <laughs> but Tutu said he used Battlecruisers. Yes. They're in the air, so... Yes, they are in the air. Um, so what happens when you get a comp that has good anti-air? Because I'm going to guess, too, too, you you played against Immortal or Reaver Disruptor? Uh, I don't remember. Let me see. <laughs> but most likely. Yeah, like, 
that's just the one I'd say because that is the ultimate doesn't remember how to shoot up comp. Okay. If so, you came across no. a comp that can shoot up. Oh. What what happened to you? I did this like a year ago. I think I used Reapers. Reapers? Mass Reapers? Yes. And that was yes. before the buff. This was my first Hell Train one, so that's a long time ago. Hmm. Also, uh, you say before the buff. Let's be real here. I'm pretty sure if you're not fighting an air comp, if you don't know you're fighting an air comp, you don't use stronger death chance. Uh, and actually, I even used... then, the grenades don't hit air, so like it, it don't don't use death stronger death chance. I used a uh, P1 mass reaper raven against uh, invasionary swarm. Okay, so uh, C tier. C tier. Carax, where do we have them? This is a this is a great map for mass building because of the fact that the trains are just like we're just gonna ominously float through here and oh, hope we're tanky enough. And mm -hmm. because Carax's buildings actually have decent DPS, the trains are only sometimes tanky enough. They still are sometimes tanky enough because Carax is the more durability oriented static defense of the static defense commanders. But the point is, yes, your buildings will be able to put in proper work and you can go units for like carriers or mortals or colossi or any other really really hard hitting units and then of course on top of all that you have the power of just solar lancing the train is gonna deal fire. so much damage fight fire with fire carex is a very high raw power commander he is good at fighting things head on so Carax should be able to do just fine. I, I'm trying to think if there's anything particularly like stand out of Carax, and I think the answer is no. Nothing he does really stands out. Credit boost, right? He just P1 what? credit boost. P1 credit boost. Eh. Shooty, shooty. Eh. Trains go die. Yeah, it, it's not against every train, but yeah, it's a pretty solid top bar option. Pretty funny too. Um, <laughs> uh, personally, I'd prefer to have Purifier Beam for every single train, but, you know, sense. point is, yeah, it, 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 I, I just don't see anything about Karak that really makes him stand out as S tier, but he could probably be A tier just on I'd also, just, he's just good. I'd also yeah. be careful recommending using Purifier Beam on every train, because how, uh, how some people read it is, you use the beams on the actual train, not the escorts. <clears throat> you have Purifier Beam off cooldown every time a train spawns, so you can murder the people who are walking with that train. Yes, not the train itself, please. Yes, that would be highly inadvisable. <laughs> and please especially don't say that I told you to do that. Please don't. <laughs> For my sanity. How about you, Tutu? Yeah, yeah I, I think P1, the chrono boost on double trains or something, is really good. You probably have to build, you or you might want to build cannons along the track further along the path than you might usually do just to, in case it respawns. Otherwise, you just do what you normally do. So, and it's pretty strong. So I put him in A. Kerrigan, where do we have him? Uh, Kerrigan has similar problems with like Abathur and Han Horner, where it's like, you're, you're, it's gonna work, but against specific comps, you're gonna get wrecked. I, I, I use Mass Broodlord Mutalist against a comp that can't hit them. That was not that bad, but against others, I don't think it would yeah. be that easy. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think have, having two lives, right, Taren. yeah, it's gonna be Cor rough. Corsairs. <laughs> so okay, I put her in C. Okay, how about you, Stixbender? Were you, what, what, what procedure did you use again? I think I used P3 for, mm. for more, more army, for more assimilation aura. I think I would find P2 considerably preferable personally, and I think if you face a ground comp, uh, lurkers are going to completely blow your mind. However, it, it's not ideal. If you're against an air comp, uh, welcome back to Kerrigan can't shoot up the game. Uh, seriously, Kerrigan cannot shoot up. She's almost as bad as Forzune. Almost. I, I feel like she has to be like down a tier because of the anti air weakness and the lack of a solution. I but we, I do think that I, I thought do we already talked about the anti air thing and that shouldn't kick people down a tier. Uh, it depends on how considerable of a problem it is. With P2 Phoenix, he has weaker anti air than anti ground, but it's still serviceable anti air because, you know, the Talus and 
Carriers. Kalarian and Mojo. Like no, but Telus, Kalarian, Mojo, they all have like really solid anti-air. Those are all champions with really solid anti-air. Even Warbringer is good anti-air, firing a Yamato yeah. cannon every three seconds. He basically is like, I'm pretty sure that with P2 increasing the damage, uh, he actually has more DPS than a Hot and Horner Battlecruiser against air. Warbringer okay. does. The so, Colossus. Letter. So I think B tier, to be B? honest. I think that Brood Lords actually that great an option for B for Broodlords? That is the first time I've said Broodlords in many months, by the way. I usually B say Dude Lords. B for not Broodlord, though. I, I would personally think that you'd be much better off with Lurker Hydra, but I always use Lurker Hydra pretty much. Okay. Um, uh, lurkers are really good. That is that is what I will say on Kerrig on the topic of Kerrigan. Lurkers are really, really good. Also, P2 Kerrigan, if you know how to use her, uh, she can solo the wave with just die and avenger honestly uh the problem is that then she can't kill the train so your biggest concern is going to be having units that can kill the train while kerrigan kills the wave if you're using p2 and you just want to hero solo the things that fight back while your units just punch a train defenseless train which i say defenseless but it has a defense that defense is called having virtually two lives uh <laughs> how about adding some zergus with shredding cloths so that the train oh, yeah. takes more damage I would, I would probably do that um I guess I should mention that. My worry was just like, okay, noted, however, that those Zerglings, as soon as they encounter a unit, it's like 50 Zerglings encounter a single Marine. The Zerglings all die. It's not literally true, but you can basically assume that's true because it's close enough. They, they die so fast to everything that you really just need to like hammer home the point. Don't have those Zerglings fighting units. They shoot a defenseless train. I thought we uh, I thought we already agreed that Kerrigan fights all the waves. Yes, yes. Just, you know, more emphasis. <laughs> the Zerglings, even more emphasis. Because, like, the Zerglings cannot fight units. Okay. Don't F2. <laughs> Don't F2 them. Does that convince you to two? Uh, oh, also, oh, I, will, I will point out. B. I, I will point out, just as a side note, Kerrigan's Zerglings, her Raptorlings, are the highest DPS per supply in all of co-op. Period. Hard stop. So, you know, that'll help against drains, right? <laughs> okay. B's so, alright. B's alright? Okay. I think. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Alright, we have a B I, guy. I, yeah. Um, Nova, where do we have him? Probably A tier. Liberator's is good. Is she S tier? Probably not. Probably not S tier, because just die is annoying when it's just like, I Griffin Airstri- Oh, they're all back. Okay. <laughs> realistically nova has enough minerals to griffin airstrike everything twice the problem is that there is the 30 second cooldown to contend with so it's a little annoying you actually have to deal with enemy units wouldn't of course, it be better and ravens are very very good at dealing with those units but wouldn't it be better just spam defense drone instead so that the liberators just kill the things for you and all the top bar has to just keep them alive because of how slow pace the early game is if you rush out your mineral economy like, if you go pure Liberator Raven and you Griffin Airstrike every wave and train past, like, the second train on the vanilla version of this map, you, you still have max a few out? thousand minerals. You, okay. you max out with a few thousand minerals lying around. Because the difficulty of this map isn't the quantity of waves, it's the size of those waves. And Griffin Airstrike doesn't care about the size of the waves, it cares about the quantity of waves, which is reasonably low on this map. The Liberators and Ravens are very strong, and they should be quite capable of handling themselves, especially with defensive drones, which you will also have minerals for. Cooldown should be your biggest limiter, not minerals. Um, Tutu, how about you? I think that she, like, you, you can... Airstrike one wave, and then the Liberators just punch the crap out of the rest of it. Yeah. And... Most waves are either like all ground or like a mix. There are only few comps that are heavy air. Like you have more air than ground. And Liberators don't fare too poorly against those waves either. So I think you just engage them a little bit earlier so that you have time to Along punch the trains. You can just fly or, you know, when the when the trains bend, you have time to like cut through the middle and then siege your Liberators and they'll just punch yeah. through. Yeah, so side. quickly. So that's why I think I put her in S. Okay, we we, we all say S. Uh, I originally said A, but I could see S. Oh, okay. Oh, I I would agree with S. Uh, I I thought of her for S, but I wasn't a hundred percent certain on saying S, so I said A. But if two two says S, then I agree. I actually also initially said A, but I'm not opposed to S. There we go, Rainer. She's where really do we, good. Where do we have? Where do we have Rainer? He's not really good. 
Rainer, he's he has the same issue as Han Horner, and yeah, it's it's basically uh, the good thing is that the early game is slow, so you can ramp up a little bit. But like, what when you get ten battle cruisers, I think you can just top ten. Like, Hyperion's just like always. You, you're not gonna stop at ten, but when you get around ten, it becomes things become a lot easier. That's a lot though. <laughs> Um, I think I started with Banshees though. I started with Banshees and then added. I would start uh, and later. finish with Banshees personally. I would just use Banshees. <laughs> Banshees are just yeah. more supply efficient, and I think they I, deal I, more I, damage to trains too. Banshees rip through trains incredibly quickly if you have a uh, mech attack breed mastery. They kill trains very fast. So, yeah. Yeah, I add. I add. BC so that they take the shots instead of the Banshees against the anti-air units. Why not they, have they the Hyperion me. tank the shots and the, or the point defense drones absorb the shots? Point defense drones? From, From the, the uh, Hyperion. Hyperion. Oh. Oh, that. Yes. Well, I put them in C. Okay, how about you? Six Bandit. <laughs> I feel like with P3, there's an argument for B, but C is still okay. And then if you're not P3, there's an argument for E, but I guess B would be okay. Uh, well, would it? Yeah, probably not. He's probably E or F without without P3. Like, don't play Raider without P3. <laughs> yeah, you need air. Like, you need this P3. mutation is, is basically telling you to go air. So uh, yeah. we agree with B. Uh, oh, I C. Sorry, I, sorry. I, I meant C. C. I said C or B. I I lean towards B, but C is fine. Okay, let's go with let's go with C. Step boy, where do we have him? Stepman is uh pretty good. Uh the fire is not such an issue as long as you have green zone active. Mm -hmm. Uh Gary doesn't care about your silly double edged. He will one shot the entire wave anyways. He just has to use two Igorbs instead of one. Good thing it has two charges. Yeah. Like Gary just doesn't care. <laughs> He will be fine. Uh, your Zerglings continue to be insanely high DPS, very, very tanky, just good at everything. Uh, green Zone counters the fire quite well. The fact that the fire will, you know, kind of negate Green Zone on the Zerglings if they're standing in it does mean you'll lose a lot more Zerglings than usual, but you can just, you know use other units with your <laughs> zerglings like ultralisks or lurkers or infestors or basically anything statman has you could even use mass corruptor and barf on the trains like literally okay use anything so where do you have uh, him he's either a or s he's in that region okay how about you tutu i think you just play normally because with just die you just spend two egorbs on the waves <laughs> like instead of using one and waiting so yeah you you do the same thing uh as you normally do i use the the brute lords oh mecha battle carrier lords yeah they have yamato I, plus links plus links yeah so you just yamato them when you have some nothing else to do while the trains just passing by all the escorts that have died already i need to learn the builder so, for that I, I can never get the, the macro part right when I'm playing Dude Lords. I get I like. I don't have a build order for that. I just. It's like, oh, six I have money. A, okay, let's make yeah, it. I get like six at a time at like 10 minutes. It's probably too slow. 10 minutes is the, the timing for the third train, right? 11 minutes is the third train. It's probably too slow. Uh, I don't remember the timing, but I, I think he's really easy and powerful. So I put him in S. Okay, yeah. so uh, we, yeah. we have an S? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I will put one note out there since you mentioned using two Egorbs on the wave. Do remember, don't use the Egorbs too tight together because Egorbs do not stack. The damage does not stack from Egorbs. So if you have to space them out, there really should be a cooldown between the two charges of Egorb to force you to have that space. But, mm, but if you shoot isn't. in two different directions. Yeah. To be fair, yeah. if you have to, it's in two not like directions. it's not like Gary would be hurt that much by a nerf. Anyways. Okay. Fire, count to like two, then fire again. Stukov, where do we have him? Stukov, probably going to use P1. Diamond backs early on, then 18 lots, range and lots, of tanks. Tanks. <laughs> lots and lots of tanks. So many it's tanks. Very strong. Um, very tanks. That, yeah. Um, 
So I think, well, against it's the, it's the air thing again, though. If, if there's air, I guess you throw in, you have more Diamondbacks and or throw in Liberators. Uh, probably just more Diamondbacks because you already have factories. Uh, but yeah, you just, you're, you're running along the trains and then the enemies will walk into your green slime. You can also <laughs> use the slime on the trains before they, before it burns. So when it's still alive, it doesn't burn. So you can just walk around and then damage it. All right. Uh, so it's pretty good. Uh, I put him in B. B? B. Okay. How about you, uh, Sixbender? Yeah, that's exactly where I was going to put him too. Um, right. I would note if you fight, face air towards the late game, you totally can add missile turrets to your tanks and diamondbacks because y you shouldn't be losing a lot of tanks. So should have done that but, in the game earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> turrets are good. That is that is all I had to say. Put them in. Yeah. All right, there we go. If you're playing Stukov and you're in the U.S., you're gonna have early Thanksgiving. Swan, where do we have him? Swan, um, he's kind of like Karak. His buildings are good. Um, his laser drill is not quite top bar levels of good, and sadly, it doesn't slow the train. Very tragic that. However, the race, uh, right? Yeah, you're gonna make turrets. You're gonna make race, and. Your rates are going to be your best DPS against the train. Uh, you could make tanks if it's a ground comp because, you know, the enemies like to hug near the train, so that means they're walking a bit slower and maybe your tanks can be fine, but... Or if you really like careful. tanks giving. <laughs> be, be careful with tanks because Swan's tanks aren't that strong. They really aren't, and they could just kind of get easily overpowered by just die attack ways so i really wouldn't recommend using tanks okay uh, i would just make mass turret and race um and if you do use tanks probably put them behind turrets the turrets are the real strength here uh and then yeah um laser drill is good whichever prestige you use because um its top bar abilities are quite useful with how the concentrated beam likes to line up with the train so that's nice. And wouldn't uh, the top bar suffer against the double edge though? I guess the pulse cannon has die. six counts of. Oh, you yeah, rather, just yeah, they just died. No they edge. just died. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, well, the pulse cannon, the pulse cannon multiple ticks yeah. doesn't do anything because the invulnerability period is too long. Ah. Uh, but well. but uh, it's like concentrated beam and pulse cannon. Both of them get to just say, "Well, you know how you all had two lives. Well, now you have one." Mm, okay. Um, so letter. He's like A or B, probably. I feel like he's closer to A than B, but. How about you, Tutu? I put him in B. Uh, same plan. Everything's the same, except that I think like just die immortals will walk over him so badly. Mm. I Even with rates. Think of immortals. Okay, so. Uh... Uh, no, no, like like if you're going mass turrets. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Walk over. And if you if you have just wraiths, then. Yeah. Uh, you better hope those are immortals are with a comp that can't shoot up, which is to say it doesn't have Storm and Archons to shoot oh, up and yeah. liquidate yeah. your wraith. Because remember, there's there's Masters and Machines. It's like, okay, Archon, Immortal, Storm. Immortals say your turrets don't exist, and Archons and Storms say your wraiths don't exist. The worst part about <laughs> Just Die is that the High Templar respawn with full energy. <laughs> so they will just storm the snot out of your wraiths. Your wraiths will kind of just go poof. Uh, if you have turrets, the immortals will say, stop doing that having turrets thing, and you will stop having turrets. Like, <laughs> Doesn't that yes. kick him down to C, though? No, no. I think he's like eight here, except there's like a small handful of comps, fewer than the number of comps that are air comps even, that will just utterly rip him to shreds. Okay. And even then, you still have your laser drill, and your turret still can do stuff against immortals. I mean, someone demonstrated how well Swan's turrets can handle even immortals being reanimated and void rifted at his turrets. Like, his turrets aren't, like, completely useless against immortals, but the immortals are going to hurt. They're going to take serious bites out of your turrets, and you're going to have to work hard to, you know, keep building turrets and keep up the fight against the immortals. So, uh... so basically, immortals are scary enough to drop you down a tier. <laughs> so, B. Not two tiers. Yes, B. Okay, regardless of prestige. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd say so. Okay, Tychus, where do you have him? Tychus is a very high DPS commander, and also 
lasts he can last a really long time. I think P three is great. So you oh. put the Odin and it, you put the Odin uh, against the the enemies, and then like everyone else can fight the fight the train. So you just throw like a like a rattlesnake healing station, where, and then Odin will just like keep fighting the enemies, <laughs> um, while your you like Sam just are fighting lots the train. Of damage to the train. That makes sense. So what do you um, have? I put him in A. Okay, how about you, Six Bender? A, a, a makes sense. He's yeah. It, All right. I, I think two two basically summed it up. <laughs> Vorzun, where do we have him? Vorzun, welcome back to man. If only I could shoot up. <laughs> like, it, it really is just the fact that she can't shoot up is the biggest thing killing her here. And uh, she can't even do the train bugging anymore. Just sad. Uh, uh, anyways, her Dark Templar will rip through trains and ground comps alike, assuming you use Shadow Fury and not basic attacks, because apparently that's not obvious. <laughs> uh, Fair enough. I suppose it's kind of a little counterintuitive that, yes, the Dark Templar is a spellcaster now, a fragile spellcaster who never wants to basic attack things. Vorzun, it's like, I would honestly say that she like could almost be S if it weren't if you were guaranteed a ground comp. <laughs> but you aren't. Yeah. So, true. she's somewhere in the A or B range, I think. How about you, uh, T2? Yeah, it's the same reason. I put her in B just because you're super good against a ground comp, but very, very bad against an air comp. So like and this one? Oh, wait. With no, two lives, that even, makes things even worse. If you make Corsairs to deal with air, like you can kill the air, but they won't damage the trains. So that sucks. Oh, you can also... Um, I think I went Mass Void Race. Yeah, I was thinking Mass Void Race too. They, they just you know, ignore the fire. And they just, yeah. the things you have to watch out because they, they can also get storm spammed. And yeah. they are also like strictly worse than Alarak Mass Void Ray, because even though Vorzun's Void Rays are stronger than Alarak's Void Rays, they don't have the power of being 50% of the cost. Yes. Okay, so B? Vorzun B? Sure. I guess so. All right. And if only she could shoot up. Zagara, where do we have her? Zagara, I, I don't think she's that bad, but I don't think people will know what to do because if you bio don't use launchers. bio launchers again <laughs> as i keep saying bio launchers you put like i put three groups so one to hit the top track one to hit the bottom track on both of these on the left side and then one at the back right ramp to hit the sec the bottom track and my army is usually at the first the top track the, so the back right so player toward, two's ramp yeah, the yeah that part. I have another smaller group there to hit the train, the the bottom train. Okay. Because I usually focus down the top train first. Um, Makes but sense. Yeah. So you just if you don't want to control the bow launchers, you just let them hit the track, and then you hit the enemies near them, and then you focus on controlling Zagara and her units. Okay. Um. Yeah, but I think um, it's like a lot of work and um. Also pretty comp dependent. You might get wrecked. So I put her in D. Okay. So how about you, uh, Stick Spender? Yeah, that seems about right. Man, it's going to be painful without bio launchers. Why is Zagara so bad without bio launchers and so many mutations? Yeah. Uh, like, I, I kind of like was wondering if maybe you'd put her higher because of bio launchers, because the reality is bio launchers are just really, really, really bad ESOs. But um they shoot up <laughs> they shoot up uh, <laughs> they're still really just really really, yeah. really bad esos they have so much less range they have so much less damage output they are so much more in, like fragile if anything gets on top of them they don't have crowd control <laughs> like yeah ahem. Letter. anyways uh, yeah d makes sense d makes sense all right uh just a slight note to those who say i just make failing cigar so easy but uh she's good right out of steam if you're the carry guy these tier lists are meant to, to be for the carry guys, not the guys who just kind of tag along and try to help wherever they can. Sure, you can do well with a girl, you can win, but you're probably getting carried by someone who has more in the tank to fight double life trains. So, yeah, there we go. D. Zertul, why do we least, have him? At least Shredding Claw Zerglings, admittedly, 
are great for killing trains. If you are a, a Zagara paired with someone who's like great at fighting the army and terrible at killing the train itself, hey, your shredding claw zergling aberration ball is going to do a great job killing the train. All right. Your banelings won't do anything, but you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's equal opportunity, not not you being the carry guy. Uh, Zertul, where do we have him? Uh, Zertul, he is... He's good. Cannon's good. Uh, DT's good. DT's very good. Like DT's uh, rip through trains comedically fast. Yeah, Void um, Templar. His Void Templar. I they they are they are basically um they're they're in league with Nova's Liberators for how fast they kill trains. Like, they, when they blink, they're actually fast. erasers. <laughs> like yeah, and they they erase trains too. Uh, honestly, I think they're actually realistically because of that blinking through multiple train cars even faster than Nova's Liberators at killing trains. Like even per supply, uh, it, it's just and you know Vorzun and uh, or sorry Zeratul and Nova both have the doubled supply, so it's fair comparison and all that. Uh, like literally, your Dark Templar just are going to utterly annihilate anything on the ground. And if it's an air comp, well then you can just make Immortals, yeah, and then Dark Templar as well because the Dark Templar are there just to kill trains. But like. You could just make immortals, and your immortals obliterate air, and they're still immortals, so they can still fight the trains. Okay, they're like their anti ground is actually shorter range, but same DPS as standard immortals. So being three times the cost, that's pretty bad. But you know, they they still can damage trains, and you still have Zero Tool himself. You still have Void Templar. You still have Legion call downs. Like Zero Tool is not hurting for DPS. You still have the Demote dude. <laughs> you still have yes. Yes, and by demote dude, we mean the promote your own army to have literally plus 100% attack speed is the big thing here. Yeah. Double attack speed. Okay, Those so... Those trades are going to letter. evaporate. Yeah, he's S tier. Uh, I feel like that should be pretty straightforward, right? How about you, T2? Um, in addition to all of those, you can trap the artifact so you can easily there it is. get lots of nine, power. Nine or every, ten. Every two minutes, your dudes get stronger. Let's say two and a half in case you like missing the timings and stuff. But every like two, three minutes, your dudes get stronger. And those Void Templar are going to just shred trains. Any fat guys out there will get <laughs> stolen or demoted. So not a, not concern at all. It is fat guy more frequently. All right, S tier for Zero Tool. Yeah. All right. So given that we have five guys in S tier, the first question is, do we put... Arcturus to double S tier. Do we introduce our first double S tier ever? He's really a we were kind of tiers above all of. We were kind boys. of saying we were kind of saying that uh, it's difficult for some of the com for some of the commanders, but like only two commanders are D tier or lower. C tier is still okay ish. Eh, I'd say C tier is still a bit difficult. Hmm. How about we move everyone except Arcturus down a tier? Uh, well, the other S know. guys still walk. Th they, they also have a really easy time. Mm. So, so we de we're definitely introducing our first S tier. Double S. Or double S tier. I am, I am an idiot. <laughs> All right. Yes. I, I, I would point out, if we move everyone down, the problem is like, that kind of messes with... Artanis and Zagar are kind of right where they should be because like F tier is your basically harming your ally e tier is you're really not doing anything unless you know exactly how to play the commander d tier is yeah you could you can help you're not going to be like carrying or anything but you can help all like, right that's what d tier kind of is it's kind of what it has been along all the tier lists it's just d tier is just the yeah i can help Ta-da! with the power of movie magic we finally have our first double s ever arcturus on hell train there we go all right. So okay. for S tier, who is the, who's the best among the S? Nova. Oh, Zertul. Yeah, Zertul. I was I was thinking Nova because of the whole I'm in the air and you can't shoot at anything. I think Stepman because you don't Stedman? do anything different. I don't do anything different with Zeratul either. I don't do anything with Nova. Oh, yeah. I don't do anything different with Nova either. <laughs> all three of them just play normal. All four of them play normally. And all four of them just walk over this mutation. But but the thing is that with Stepman, whether they're ground or air, you kind of do the same thing. You do? Also, this, you, can also, you can also say the same thing with Nova, to be honest. But okay, how about this? Stepboy... I would actually switch between Corruptors and... Stepboy buffs his ally. Ground. 
The boy gives the green zone and the blues in the purple zone, which buffs his ally. So that gives him the nod over the highest. I mean, Zero Tool gives your ally plus 100% attack speed. That's true. If okay, back to square one. Okay, can we say that Phoenix is the last lowest, among the S? Lowest, yes. That's, that's yes. easy. Phoenix is definitely the lowest of them. Okay. Huh. Hmm, who's easier? I think Zertul is easier because you have so many options that all work. Yes, you don't even have to macro properly. Unlike yeah, you can still go... Boy. Well, cannons are relatively low DPS. Uh... No, his cannons are not that low DPS, actually. Uh, especially if you're, if you're a P2. His cannons are not low DPS. They are very much not low DPS. <laughs> they are uh... higher DPS than many others that... They're higher DPS than a lot of other commanders can get with, like, proper stuff. They're a lot higher DPS than Karax cannons, that's for sure. Eh, I found yeah, that, I found that when I'm playing with cannons, I, I don't have a high damage count compared to an ally. Because they still have to phase in, all the while they're getting shot at. I mean, that's more because if your ally knows what they're doing, they will just you know, atomize the entire enemy within two seconds of it spawning into existence. So, to be fair. Eh. I, I'm, yeah. I'm actually thinking your Nova. Cannons are, your cannons should be sufficient boy. DPS. It's just that your Dark Templar or Void Templar or whatever will just oh, yeah, be like true. overkill DPS. Yeah. Uh, which Void Templar need really now, are the way it? to go. <laughs> yeah, Maybe. Void Templar are good. Uh, I mean... If Zoria you look at my order of least macro to most macro, you're probably looking like Nova Zero Tool Stepman, I guess. Yeah, so. Nova has the least macro requirement, and it's well, Nova has to still get upgrades, but like at this point, we're just being silly. <laughs> yeah, Nova, Nova, just by her playstyle alone, means her entire, entire army is immune to one of the mutators. So maybe that's why. <sighs> I, I, I mean, yes, but on the flip side, Liberators and uh, Ravens, I'd say, are a lot harder to use than Dark Templar. Like, Nova just, in general, is just going to be... Like, Zeratul A-clicks and occasionally presses Blink. Nova has to siege up Liberators and spam Raven spells and place defense drones to make sure they don't die, and she also has to make sure she sieges up the Liberators in, like, a logical location so they're not going to get the enemies shooting at them or going around somehow their zones. You make it sound harder than it actually is. It's just rapid firing. <laughs> it's just, it's just uh, sp spamming know. controls. It's just button mashing. Being hard to use, and I see people complaining about F two. So like, zero mm. tools. That min is just like you just F two A. Yeah. As you normally do. Zero tool also F two A's. That's the thing. Yes. Hmm. Nova's the only one who doesn't F2A, but like, eh. Her damage output, though. My goodness, Liberator is so it's, it's good against trains. Her, her damage output is lower than zero tools. Against trains? Against trains. Against, against everything. Against Void Templar, Templar, I guess. Alright, so we have Zero Tool. We have Zero Tool top of S. Because of the, the, the train damage. And this then, is a long and pointless argument against three basically indistinguishable commanders. <laughs> they're not indistinguishable, they're just good in different flavors. Yeah, well, they're actual, like, indistinguishable in terms of, like, which is better. It's like, they... Yeah, I guess. Same, man. <laughs> Alright, fine. We'll have them in that order to, uh, to save on time. Who's the best among the A? Um... I think Karax. Because, you know, P1. Chrono. Funny. I'd say Alarak is better. Alarak? Yep. <laughs> Alarak, yeah. Because. Yeah. Wrathwalkers, empower, empower me. Empower me, Wrathwalkers. He has. Ascenders. Destroyers, he Mothership. Or every four minutes, or two minutes on P2. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Uh, who's second best? Uh, is it. Tahaka, actually? <laughs> is it already correctly ordered? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, is Karax better than Tychus? I think so. Okay, I'll take that. All right. I Plus, think so, yes, that ally that. help helping ally part. Ah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes, there so it we is. Can leave it in this order because Karax helps his ally. Great. <laughs> All right. Who's the best among the beasts? Stukov. 
I'd say... Stukov, I think, has the least problem against air. Uh, well, Swan also doesn't have a lot of problems against air, but... Yeah, yeah, he has a problem against a different thing. <laughs> Uh, Swan, I think, ha- has fewer weaknesses if you go P1. Because your siege tanks shoot uh, shoot the trains and everything on the ground. Diamondbacks or Liberators fight the air. And I don't see any other problem you could possibly have. If you do, uh, you can always just... Sheer lack of, a sheer lack of mid-game power and the fact that um, if the enemies actually get on top of your tanks and then everything died! <laughs> And then you stop having any units. Like, mm, you can always, you can still like put a barracks in front and just infest it if, yeah, if things get close. Like, the first double train is really strong stuff. Uh, I guess. Especially, it, it, it's a high tier wave, which is why especially Vorazun like really has to be at the bottom of B here because it will be like, if you're against the wrong, against Sky Terran, for example, you're going to get the double train and you're going to get two trains each escorted by like eight battle cruisers. And even if you went Corsairs, you're gonna be unable to kill them because they have three base armor. It's just awful. Mm. Uh, but for Stukov, it's just a matter of like if they just overpower your tanks. Uh, uh, yeah, I'd literally just be worried about getting overpowered as Stukov personally is the biggest concern more than air. Is just the concern of if it's a strong comp, they might just brute force overpower me looking at shadow tech in particular so you save a top bar for those big waves you have to save a top bar for more waves than you have enough top bar to have for every wave you just have to be on top of macro enough to have enough tanks is realistically what it is okay Uh, with an ally you should be fine though because they'll be able to provide top bar for the waves you don't top bar so who's who's top of b if not stukov i would say kerrigan i think Kerrigan top of B? Personally. I'm not I'm not averse to that. Kerrigan has a very strong anchor. And with P2, you can just crowd control the entire attacking wave. And just yeah. have your army fight the trains. Is is B already correctly ordered? <laughs> Probably. Okay. Possibly. I, I, I could see Swan against above Stukov, but that's pretty close, so that's like I could go I could go either way on that one. Stukov versus Swan. Alright, let, fine. Let's call it correctly ordered. <laughs> <laughs> for C. Who's the best among the C? I'd say Jimmy is above Hunter Horn, otherwise it's correctly ordered. How about All you right. do too? Yeah, that looks fine. Alright, for D, who's better, Artie or Zaggy? I think Zakar is better. I mean, you already know this is just going to be which one of us you ask. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright. But Artanis helps his ally. <laughs> <laughs> No, he doesn't. Don't you dare not use P3. Let's use a super. <laughs> let's use a super scientific method. I, I'm holding a coin. If it lands on heads, <laughs> we'll put Artanis top of D. Coin. If it lands on flower, if it lands on flower, I'll put Zaggy on top of D. Let's see. All right, flower. <laughs> okay, Zagara wins. <laughs> Flower, so Zagara wins. There we go. All right, there is the tier list, guys. Uh, watch T2 is Sticks Battles channels. I will look them down below, and I will see you guys next time.